What is up? It is your guitar instructor, Miles, back with Guitar Fluence. And today I'm gonna to be talking to you about a guitar skills checklist. And this is essentially a checklist of things that every guitar player should know. And the way that I came up with this checklist is I actually conducted a research study. I went into a Facebook group and it was a big group, diverse group of guitar players. And I asked, you know, what are things that every guitar player needs to know? And then I got this. And so there's a link in the description below that to my website and it's guitarfluence.com slash checklist every guitar should know. And uh, yeah, you can check that out if you wanna learn more about the research study, but we'll just dive right into what everyone mentioned and my thoughts on whether you need to learn. And the first thing that came up a lot was guitar theory and music theory as a whole. And really, music theory, there are three tenets of music theory. You have rhythm, you have harmony, and you have scales. And of course, these all come together and you can obviously dive really deep into all three of these. I mean, when it comes to rhythm, you have everything from quarter notes to polyrhythms. When it comes to harmony, you have everything from triads to 13th chords, right? And then you have scales where you have the minor pentatonic scale, or you have, you know, simple diatonic harmony, like the C major scale, or you have advanced scales, like the, like the exotic scales that I've covered, like the Kumoi scale, or uh, other advanced scales like the bebop scale. Uh, there are all sorts of crazy scales out there. And my thoughts on theory are, you'll wanna learn theory, uh, and it, it depends on your goals, right? Like if you're a session guitar player, there's no question, you have to learn guitar theory. You have to learn music theory as a whole. If you're playing with a band, I strongly, urge you to learn theory because, especially if you're playing with a piano player or a, you know, a horn player, or you're playing in a jazz band, you're gonna communicate with theory. What's incredible about music theory is you can go and communicate with someone who doesn't even know your language if you know music theory. You could put your music in front of them. If they understand music theory, they could play it. And that's what's incredible about music is music is a language. And of course, guitar theory is just how theory relates to the guitar itself. But you know, once you realize that music is a language, you'll start to look at music theory as not just a way to improve your own playing and your understanding of music, but also as a very important and effective means of communication. And so of course, this brings us to scales and a lot of the scales mentioned uh, in the research study were, you know, pentatonic scales and major and minor scales. And pentatonic scales are really valuable because pentatonic scales have very neutral harmony. You know, like the minor pentatonic scale is a great minor scale because it doesn't have the flat two from Phrygian. It doesn't have the major sixth of Dorian. And it's just a really neutral sounding minor scale that works in most situations where you're playing up against a minor chord. And then your major and minor scales are really important to learn because the majority of music that you play and will learn is going to be played in a major or minor scale. And in the world of modes, you know, that's your Aeolian mode and your Ionian mode. And then next we have harmony, chords, and intervals. And they obviously all work together, you know. So your chords, are multiple notes played together, right? Three or more, generally. And then your harmony, harmony is just understanding the construction of chords and understanding intervals. And what an interval is, an interval just defines the distance from one note to the next note. And if I told you to go from, like if I asked you to move up a minor third from an A note, would you know that you're supposed to go to a C, you know, and that's the power of intervals. And the most common and easy to learn interval, in my opinion, is the power chord interval, which you have your root note, which is your index finger, and then your ring finger is playing fifth. And from there, if you can get down the root and the fifth, and then from there, the fourth, 
and then your minor thirds and your major thirds, you're off to the races. And uh, that brings us to rhythm. Rhythm is arguably the most important skill in music because even if you don't understand the theory behind scales and the theory behind harmony, well, you can still play songs if you've got rhythm and technique down. And so you need rhythm no matter what. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You can't go play with a group if you don't have rhythm. If your rhythm sucks, then you're out. And so learn rhythm. Start by just sitting down and focusing on the rhythm for songs that you already know. And if you're gonna advance in rhythm, then don't, like, just look for the next step, step up. And start by learning quarter notes, and then eighth notes, and triplets, and sixteenth notes, and then go from there. Rhythm is honestly really fun, and once you start to understand rhythm, it's gonna really help your composition, like your compositional skills, and your improvisational skills as well. And uh, then the next thing is tuning. And of course, tuning, you gotta know tuning. That's plain and simple. You're gonna sound terrible if your guitar is not in tune. And that's that's it. That's all I gotta say for tuning. Learn how to tune. Uh, songs, songs are, songs are really important to learn uh, because songs help you build up a vocabulary. They also help you develop your ear. And learning songs it's kind of like when you practice sentence writing in school, you know, uh, learning songs will help you understand courses, verses, solos, outros, intros, blah, blah, blah. So it'll help you understand how they're composed and it'll just make you a better guitar player overall. It'll help you to develop your guitar lick vocabulary, your guitar riff vocabulary, your chord progression vocabulary, and that's the value of learning songs. And then the next thing on the checklist is guitar techniques. And obviously you need techniques in order to execute all of this, right? And the techniques you learn will be based on whatever you want to play. So obviously if you want to play music by BB King, well, you're going to have to learn just simple down picking, probably hammer-ons, some vibrato, and that's about it. Seriously, uh, you don't need too much. But if you're going to learn how to play like Steve Vai, well, that's a whole different story. You're going to have to learn whammy bar technique, right? You'll have to get a guitar with a whammy bar if you don't already have one. Then you'll have to learn advanced techniques like sweep picking and multi-finger tapping. So, like I say, your guitar technique goals are just going to be based on what you want to play and what you want to write. And then... That brings us to having fun. A lot of people tend to leave out the having fun. And actually, I've had more fun in the past two years playing guitar than, uh, than I've had in a long time. At least when I play guitar uh, alone. Of course, I think play, having fun is... Like, if you have a band, it's going to be a lot more fun to play guitar. And so, get out there and play with a band as well. And uh, the, I mean, sometimes having a band is great, but only if you've got great band chemistry. And of course, I've had incredible band chemistry with, you know, several people, but I have said no to so many opportunities because I feel like the band is not a right fit or the music is not a right fit. But anyways, I'm kind of steering away from having fun. But yeah, you know, pick up your guitar with fun in mind. Practice exercises that are fun. Like if you're learning guitar theory, then, or, you know, something related to it, like rhythm, scales, learn songs. Playing songs is fun. And you can learn theory by learning songs. You know, just learn a song and learn how uh, the song was created and the theory behind the song. And a great way to do that is check out Rick Beato's channel where he breaks down songs all the time. And the next thing is to develop a practice routine and goals. And so a practice routine shouldn't feel like a practice routine. Maybe it should. But what I'm trying to get at is you just want to develop the habit of picking up your guitar every day. Put it in. I mean, if that is your goal, right? So put it in a spot where you see it 
and you can pick it up. It's that simple. And as you start to progress and learn more, then you're going to be far more tempted to pick it up and you're going to practice all the time. Now, when it comes to learning advanced techniques, you just want to take that slowly. I mean, you can take it fast, but they can be really frustrating. And so that's why it's important to get down a routine, you know, spend five minutes a day working on your sweet picking technique and you'll probably have it down in a month. Seriously. And then lastly, there was a funny comment. And that is, uh, one of the tips was to hide your bad guitar playing with distortion. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's, a uh, that's a good tip for beginners. A lot of intermediate players too. But don't do that, you know. Learn to sound good no matter what your guitar amp tone is. But also, like I say, it was a joke and I shouldn't take it seriously. But here I am, right? Anyways, so to summarize your checklist, you've gotta learn guitar theory and music theory. You're gonna learn scales, pentatonic scales, major and minor scales. You gotta learn harmony, chords, intervals, rhythm, tuning, songs, guitar techniques, how to have fun, develop a practice routine, and that's really about it. So, thank you. I know this wasn't my ordinary type of teaching video, but uh, hopefully it was helpful to you. And definitely like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think. Let me know in the comments what you think is essential to learn on the guitar. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you in the next video. Rock on.